for the majority of the fire, it, it is out and um, under control. Now at five, firefighters putting out an apartment fire in the avenues. What they're saying about potentially discovering the cause. Plus a former University of Utah football star facing domestic abuse charges. The shocking things police say he did to his girlfriend. And it's a pothole palooza. Salt Lake City tackling the nasty pothole problem. What to do if you know of a pothole in need of repair. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Good evening, I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us. We do begin this evening with an apartment fire in the Salt Lake City Avenues. This happening on the fourth floor corner unit at the Hillcrest Apartments. That's near 67 North A Street. All happening just before one this afternoon. Firefighters telling us no one was hurt, but the entire north wing had to evacuate for several hours. They don't know what caused the fire, but a spokesperson with the Salt Lake City Fire Department not sounding too hopeful about investigators finding the source. Unfortunately, fire tends to destroy things pretty thoroughly, so uh, we'll see what they can find. Hopefully we'll get an answer out of it. Captain Mumidi saying that initially it was reported someone may have been stuck inside, but he says two searches came back clear. There were no injuries. And if fire scarring isn't enough, neighboring apartments now dealing with water damage as well. And former University of Utah football star Tavion Thomas facing charges of domestic abuse. The alleged incident happening here in Utah. ABC4's Dana Green in the studio with the details. Dana. Yeah, that's right. Thomas was working out for NFL scouts just a few weeks ago, but now he is in Salt Lake County Jail. The former Ute star was booked on three felony counts of domestic violence. According to the police report obtained by ABC4, Thomas allegedly pulled a knife on his girlfriend last week and took her phone away. He also allegedly told his girlfriend that she would be dead before police find her. Thomas played two seasons with the Utes. He was a first-team All-Pac-12 player in 2021, set a school record with 21 rushing touchdowns. Last year, he was in and out of the lineup with personal issues. His aunt, who raised him, died in September, and Thomas stepped away from the team for a while. Thomas is being held without bail, seeing this is the third accusation of domestic violence in the last six months. He is scheduled to appear in court April 21st. Back to you. All right, thank you, Dana. Well, tonight, the Twila County Council is meeting to discuss building an inland port in their county. County officials are generally uh, for the idea. Yeah, however, some residents not on board. ABC4's Annika Johns live in the newsroom with the latest details. Annika. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. Like you said, some residents in Tula County are unhappy with the plan of an inland port, and they're saying that officials are just blatantly ignoring what the public wants. They've tried to downplay it and make it sound like it's no big deal. It's just a task that needs to be done, and it's just going to start the process. Twilla County residents are fighting back against a resolution they say will negatively impact their community and the surrounding environment. The resolution is to create a Utah Inland Port Authority project area. This project area would be developed in an underdeveloped area of the county and officials say that this development would create new jobs, expand the rail service and improve the movement of materials. We're trying to help optimize their logistics system and by that we mean can we help shippers and businesses in the community have access to the logistics that are going to carry their commodities, their products to a global community. But one of the biggest issues residents of the area have with this development is how they feel the county has been secretive about the inner works of the project. I believed that it was only about the resolution and setting up the project area and nothing else had been done, I probably wouldn't be as concerned about it. However, officials say that nothing has been placed into motion and tonight's meeting is to clear the air of any misunderstandings. We're just hoping we can explain everything, assure the public that this is going to be an open and transparent process, that we're not talking about anything that is going to overpower the community. The meeting is scheduled for later this evening and Durfee says that if anyone has issues with this development, the worst thing they can do is remain silent. And I think that people need to speak up and let people know that they're opposed to things because silence is acceptance. The meeting is set to start at 7 p.m. tonight in the county council chambers located in Tooele. Reporting live from the newsroom, Annika Johns, ABC4 News.
All right, thank you, Annika. Well, when we think of avalanche danger, we usually think of slides up along the high mountain peaks. However, the record snowpack and the intense warm up this week are creating dangerous avalanche conditions all the way down into the foothills. The heavy snowfall from last week didn't get a chance to really stabilize before the jump in temperatures. Those two elements are what's creating the hazards in areas that normally would be safe to recreate this time of year. Really what we recommend is that people avoid terrain where avalanches could happen. And that once we get through this for first major warm up, things will settle out and be easier to manage. All right, with high avalanche danger, you need to avoid areas with steep slopes. You should always check the latest avalanche forecast when heading out, even if it's just the hike along the foothills. And we are checking that latest avalanche forecast right now. Chief Meteorologist Lana Brophy. Avalanche warning has been extended, guys, and it's been expanded into new portions of the state. Let's take a look. This is going to hold through 6 a.m. Thursday in the Central Mountains. Now added to the warning, we also know that the Oakers, the Stansbury, the Wasatch, all of our mountains, Wellsville, impacted by this because of the record amount of snow we've seen. High avalanche danger is out there and snow holding steady. Great shot from the Mirror Lake Highway. Thank you, Chris, for sending it our way. Clear skies with lots of sunshine. That also adds to the threat. High danger for the Wasatch, Western Uintas, moderate danger in the skyline areas of the central portion of the state. Our temperatures haven't helped up much. We hit record highs today. We are going to take a tumble here as the storm systems headed our way, but not before we break some records. 83 already in Salt Lake, and that blew the 80 degree record out of the water. We also stayed so mild overnight that we have a new record warm low. We only made it down to 56, and that is way above average. Now we're not going to stay that way. We're tracking the timing of a potent cold front coming through and the impact in my full forecast. Glenn, Emily, over to you. Lana, thank you. Our record-breaking winter weather wrapping up, but Salt Lake City drivers, well, they're dealing with those nasty potholes. Today, Mayor Aaron Mendenhall announcing the city's plans for Pothole Palooza. Efforts starting yesterday with road crews filling more than 1,300 potholes. The city's week-long goal is to repair almost 6,000 all across the city. And it's those very snowstorms whose water we need so desperately that's also making our roads incredibly difficult to navigate. There are several ways to report potholes throughout Salt Lake City by using the city's mobile app, sending an email, or even calling the city's street office. You can find all of this information by going to myslc.gov. Good information. Okay, in developing news now, the trial of Lori Vallow Daybell, the woman accused of killing her two children and conspiring to murder her husband's ex-wife, took a dramatic turn this afternoon after Lori asked to be excused from attending. According to East Idaho News, courtroom observers say Lori came back from a recess earlier this afternoon visibly upset. The court spent the morning hearing from a police detective who investigated Lori's kid's disappearance. Well, Lori waived her right to attend the rest of the trial, but the judge overruled, forcing her to stay. Prosecutors then moved on to, the quest to question the detective about some of the graphic discoveries made at the children's grave sites. Okay, it's expected the trial could take up to three months, so stick with us here at ABC4 News. We will continue to follow it and bring you the latest developments here on air and online at abc4.com. The University of Utah fundraising for a new on-campus baseball stadium. This amid uncertainty for the program's future with Smith's Ballpark. Now, the University Baseball team has shared Smith's Ballpark in downtown Salt Lake City with the Bees for more than 25 years. The U's proposed stadium would cost $35 million and be built on campus where the Utah baseball practice field is and would fit 1,200 fans. The new stadium could open as early as 2025, the same year the Bees will leave Smith's Ballpark. Still ahead, a closer look at preparing for spring flooding. How emergency crews in places like Morgan County have been preparing for months. It's tonight's Behind the Badge. And mid 70s with lots of sunshine in Iron County, the Cedar City cameras showing off the weather story of the day. High pressure's in control, but that's about to change. The reason why, Utah's most accurate forecast.